Welcome back to question 5 of our projectile motion problems. The question reads, a physicist turned motorcycle stunt rider will jump a 20 meter wide row of cars. The launch ramp is 30 degrees and 9 meters high. The land ramp is also 30 degrees and is 6 meters high. Find the minimum speed for the launch. Let's begin with an illustration. So let's pretend that we have a stretch of land and we have cars all along this land and it's 20 meters. There is a launch ramp over here and it is 30 degrees to the horizontal. It's also at a height of 9 meters. So from here to here it's 9.0 meters high. The land ramp is on this side also 30 degrees but it has a height of 6. 6.0 meters. The strategy I'll use to solve this is similar to the one that I used in question number four. I want to find out the time that it takes for the motorcycle stunt person to go from here to here. Because by finding the time, I can then find the initial velocity. The initial velocity will help me find the minimum speed for the launch. So how do I go about doing that? Well, I'll start off with this formula right here. This formula relates x and t. x being the distance from the launch pad all the way to the end. So I can replace x with 20 meters. I don't know what my initial velocity is. Cosine at an angle of 30 degrees times t. Now just before I continue, I want to make note that the person performing the stunt will take on a parabolic trajectory. So they will move in this parabolic motion. The reason why this is important is because all parabolas can be modeled using quadratics. This formula next represents a quadratic. We have t raised to the power of 2. So let's use that to our advantage to also create another equation in which we can solve simultaneously with the one that I've written in blue. In case that's confusing to you, let me show you what I mean. First of all, if we were to draw this on an xy plane, so let's say that this is our y-axis and this is our x-axis, we start at 9 and we end at 6. So if this is 9 and this is 6, that's a difference of 3. So if I were to start or draw my parabola starting at the origin, it would look something like this, where it would end at negative 3. So just pretend that our parabola was like that, and instead of it starting at 9, I made it start at 0. Since the difference is 3, we would end off at negative 3. This is important because when I set up my equation here, I want my y value to be negative 3. Because only at y is equal to negative 3 does it actually reach the 20 meter mark. Filling out this formula further, I still don't know my v initial, so I'll leave it blank. Next comes sine at 30 degrees times t, that's this part, minus 0.5 the force due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And because gravity is pulling the object downwards and it's going in the opposite direction, so if there were no gravity, it would just continue to go up, we write down negative half. That's where the negative comes from in the formula. That's where it's derived. Then we have t squared at the end. So I would like to solve these two equations simultaneously. Simultaneously meaning that I'll solve for v sub 0 in this equation and substitute that into equation number 2. So I have, let me show you, this is equation number 1. I want to solve for v sub 0. I'll divide both sides by cosine 30 t, where I have 20 over cosine 30 degrees t is equal to v initial. I will take what v initial is equal to and throw it into there. What this will do is create an equation that's exclusively in terms of time. And once I find time, I can go back and substitute it into here to get v initial. If that's too much, let me show you step by step. I have negative 3 is equal to 20 over 
cosine 30 degrees T, sine 30 degrees T, that's coming from there. And this T and this T will cancel out because we have one T on the top and one T at the bottom. Minus negative 0 0.5 times 9.8 is negative 4.9. So I've simplified by multiplying t squared. And all I have to do now is solve for t squared, which is not hard to do. First, I will simplify this part using my calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in degrees. So 20 times sine 30. Right? I'm multiplying 20 and sine 30, dividing it by cosine 30. Divided by cosine 30. And that gives us a decimal value of 11.547. You can write that in if you like, if it makes matters simple for you. But uh, I'll just keep it this way for now and move this expression. Okay, so 11.547. Move it to this side. If you move something over, it becomes negative. So we have negative 3 minus this value of 11.547 is equal to negative 4.9 t squared. And let's simplify this further. Negative 3 minus the previous answer. You should get that in your calculator. So that's the left side of the equation. And to get rid of negative 4.9, we divide both sides by negative 4.9. So I'll take this and divide it by negative 4.9. And this gives me 2.968 is equal to t squared. To get rid of this squared value, we square root both sides. So we square root that. And this should give us a time value. Actually, two time values given that t is squared. You should get negative. 1.72 seconds and positive 1.72 seconds. Of course, we will choose the positive version because the negative does not make sense in terms of the context of the question. So it takes n positive 1.72 seconds to reach this point of the parabola. Now that I found the time, I can actually substitute it right into here, like I said I would, to find the initial velocity. Of course, you do need to do a little bit of rearranging. And you know what? Why not just throw it into there since we've already rearranged for v initial? OK, so 20 divided by cosine at 30 degrees times the number that we just found. And that is 13.40. 13.40, and let's make sure that we have the correct number of significant figures. We have not one number after the decimal place. So 13.40 meters per second is the initial velocity or the minimum speed that you need to reach this point. Of course, if you go faster, you'll reach a point further down the ramp, which is even better. But this is the minimum speed that is required. And so there you have it. Another question answered. Make sure to watch question six so that we look at another problem and that you can practice this further. Talk to you soon.